Omgyan to Mirandasyan Kirajana Salakaya Chapsu Militam Yenatas Mai Sri Uduvena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Sirs Vati Deve Gorvani Pacharine Nirmishesha Sunyavari Pastatya De Sakarine Panchakalpa Turu Vishya Kripa Sindhu Vaib Vachya Patita Nam Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaho Maha Jaya Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vinu Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So what we're here we're presenting a PowerPoint slideshow done inter in an interactive way and those of you who were here yesterday thank you for coming back today I can see a few of you are not were not here yesterday so this is a, a 95 uh, 95 slides on why it is important that why it is important more than ever now to read and study Srila Prabhupada's books <clears throat> Um, yesterday we went through um, the different generations, four generations. <clears throat> First generation, Prabhupada disciples. Second, disciples of the disciples. Third, uh, like that, <clears throat> four generations of devotees. We explained. What I can do is go quickly we did 33 slides yesterday. Uh, this is the original how and why it is more important to study Srila Prabhupada's books more deeply than ever before. The four generations, Srila Prabhupada, his disciples, disciples of disciples. Um, issues, instructions, context, and intention, and the different uh, issues that are facing our society, we might use those as an example. Srila Prabhupada's books, lectures, conversations, letters, personal instructions, um, time, place, and circumstance, will, mood, the desired purpose, um, issues, instructions, contacts, and intentions gradually start to fade as the generations continue. Uh, and then intentions, everything goes down gradually. And then we have some quotes from, quotes from Srila Prabhupada about the importance of reading his books. And then we talked about uh, personal study, group study, prayerful reading. And uh, what Prabhupada said about his books. Uh, ten steps, uh, ten su suggested steps to begin practice of prayerful reading of the Prabhupada's books, like that. And then we ended with the four slides describing the four, or uh, illustrating the four uh, prayers by Sanatan Goswami. That's a very quick overview. For those of you who are here, it's not new. Okay, so what we're going to do, continue and try to cover uh, part two and then tomorrow part three. So today is reading with devotees and getting the most out of what you read. First read and or hear as explained before. Then repeat and explain among the others. Ask relevant questions. Discuss from all angles. Apply what you learn. These are some steps 
to get the benefit of what you read. What, who can tell me what that picture is? The six Goswamis of Vrindavan Maharaj? Yes, it's the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. Okay. They would come together every morning and discuss Shastra. The next slide is knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes. So you have three categories. So somebody read where it says knowledge. Categories of knowledge include Knowledge, memory, and recall, understanding, and realization. So within the category of the knowledge, memory of what you read, and ability to recall it and speak it, understanding and realization. In the category of skills, what do we see? Continue, Radha Bhakti. Personal application, preaching application, theological application. Okay, so with the skills that one develops through knowledge, and then you, you apply them on a personal level, the preaching level, and the theological level, which means the understanding of this knowledge as it presents itself within the broader context of our, our theology or our philosophy. And the last one is? Faith and conviction, mood and uh, mission. Well, wait, values and attitudes. You see this side in red there. It says values and attitudes. Yeah, okay. sorry. Uh, faith and conviction, mood and mission, evaluation, authority, academic and moral integrity, responsibility for learning. Okay, so from knowledge and skills, skills and values, and skills and attitudes, faith and conviction, hysteresis, what is the mood, what is our mission as a society, how to evaluate that. What is the authority that we base our knowledge from? The integrity that is needed or that is automatically understood in relationship to our uh, the philosophy and the morality that the philosophy is centered around and developing a sense of responsibility for learning. So here's the next one. So starting from the Bottom, read going upward. Somebody can read. Higher, higher thinking skills and values. No, no, you're going the wrong way. Start from the bottom. Sorry, Maharaj. And um, theoretical knowledge. Understand. No, that's, that's not, not theological. Read that again. Knowledge, theoretical. Theoretical knowledge, right? Yep. Theoretical knowledge, understanding, application, realization, higher thinking skills and values. Okay, so when you read, you're getting theological, theoretical knowledge of the philosophy and the practice. Then the next stage is to apply it, to understand it, so think about it, understand it, then apply it. And you see each of the ones become wider. Uh, the next one is realization. That is called Vigyan. We have understanding and theoretical knowledge is more like uh, 
gyan. Realization is vigyan. That means we can actually, uh, we get the realization of the knowledge. And from that brings skills, higher thinking, and values. So if we understand very clearly how the progression starts through reading, and then when we're reading, we try to understand. From understanding, we see what is the, how it applies in our life and how do we practically apply it. Through that application, is the stage of realization and realization brings transcendental consciousness, spiritual skills, and uh, those values that are that uh, are the foundation for our relationship with Krishna. Okay. So someone read. Mm -hmm. Knowledge, the theoretical knowledge facts, which form the foundation of ongoing progress in Krishna consciousness, I think. Okay, very good. Those facts which are ongoing in our process. Next. Yeah. For him who has conquered the mind, the mind is the best of friends. But for one who has failed to do so, his mind will remain the greatest enemy. Bhagavad Gita 6.6 Learn the art of mind control. Learn how to direct your mind rather than being be directed by the mind. Learn how to harness the thoughts within the mind and direct them towards one's goal in life or one's practice in Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are just visual to help us understand these principles. Uh -huh. So what do we have here? Where is it coming from? The objection Arjuna makes to fighting the battle of Kurukshetra is objected. So these are the arguments. So yes, he's you... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes, he's presenting each of these arguments as a way to say, I don't want to fight. It is wrong to fight because of all these reasons. Okay, so read them. Superiors are killed, destruction of the dynasty, destruction of eternal, <clears throat> eternal family tradition, Vedic rituals will stop, irreligion predominates in the family, women become polluted, unwanted progeny, Varna Shankara, chaos in society. So when Faced with Krishna's instructions to engage in fighting against his family members, Arjun, overwhelmed with compassion, feeling of what is the value of such fights, um, he doesn't just turn away, he gives reasons why he doesn't want to fight. And these are the reasons he presents. Okay, so we're setting the foundation for a discussion now. This is just a, another way to present what we presented before. The three categories, knowledge, uh, skills, and attitudes, faith. Who understands what is KUP? K U P P. What that means? Okay, that is knowledge, knowledge understanding. understanding. Yeah. 
Okay, and then we have Mars, Moon, Academic, that. So these are just, you know, uh, we, I don't know what you call them, but the ways of remembering the different categories. Okay. Someone else read? What are the uses of best basic theoretical basic theoretical knowledge in your personal life for preaching in terms of sorry Maharaj I can't see after that neither can I let's see it's not visible I don't know how to make it visible the that little picture kind of anyway the next one, read the next one. Wait a minute, that's not the next one. Okay, understanding. Understanding, De deepening your understanding of the Krishna consciousness theology, particularly through uh, studying it from a wide range of perspectives, perspectives and through developing thoughtfulness and intro, intros, intros, introspectives. Introspection. <laughs> okay, so understanding, uh, study it from different angles of vision. Bodhiantas parasparam, putiantas chimam nityam. See it from different angles, discuss it, get a wider range of views on the same thoughts, and develop a sense of introspection and a means of thoughtfulness regarding studying it from different angles. So this really inspires the intelligence when reading and understanding. This seems like is best, best done through a group, but it can also be done individually. Okay, statement by Srila Prabhupada. To hear and explain them, the books, is more important than reading them. One can assimilate the knowledge of the revealed scriptures only by hearing and explaining. Hearing is called Shravana and explaining is called Kirtana. The two processes of Shravana and Kirtana are of primary importance to progressive spiritual life. Primary importance, hearing and chanting and assimilating the knowledge through this process of hearing and chanting. So Prabhupada says to hear and explain is more important than reading. Of course, reading is the foundation, but hearing and explaining brings to what is called the level of smarnam. When you hear nicely, and then you can explain, and when you explain, you can remember. Each of these different categories builds itself upon the, the next category, and then ultimately the goal is to smart them like that. And the emphasis here, you can see it in the bold letters, one can assimilate the knowledge of the view only by hearing and explaining. So when we read, we forget, <laughs> generally. There is a statistic in the in the general secular world, which explains that um, generally people remember 10% of what they read, 20% uh, of what they hear, 30% of what they uh, see, and 50% of hearing and seeing when it's combined together, memory comes up to 50%. The visual adds to the audio and it brings about a greater amount of remembrance. 70% of what people do, they remember, and 90% of what they teach. Mm -hmm. So when you teach, 
you actually are completing the process of hearing and chanting nicely. And this is what is explained here by hearing and explaining. Explaining means in this sense, kirtana. Teaching leads to progression in spiritual life. That's from the Bhagavatam. Any questions regarding that one? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Arriba. Question on, on explaining um, and hearing in particular. So hearing from, um, I guess, authority, hearing from proper spiritual senior devotees and spiritual masters. And when you're explaining, are you explaining to fellow devotees and is that preaching? Yeah, explaining, yeah, either giving a class speaking to someone so you i guess you just have to kind of self correct yourself so if you're not explaining yourself properly others will will tell you and correct you is that what what you should no, try to endeavor well if you're hearing it says if you're hearing then you'll be able to explain. Yeah. Hearing means reading. Hearing means hearing the audio sound. Okay. So I tell you, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That's hearing. And you explain Krishna is the Personality of Godhead. And you hear it, and then you uh, speak it, and then you may also explain what it means when you say Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So taking the hearing process and then explaining it. Mm -hmm. Oh, understood. So here, because it says one can assimilate the knowledge. It's not just remembering it. It means to assimilate. It means to assimilate. It means becomes a a feature of the intelligence. Thank you for the clarity. Okay, so thank you. Okay. Someone read that. Mm -hmm. One who sees in action, in action, and action in inaction is intelligent among men, and he is in the transcendental position, although engaged in all sorts of activities. What does that mean? This is a discussion point. So now explain it. Anyone can explain it, but the speaker can start if they want. One who sees inaction, in action, and action, and in inaction, is intelligence among men. He is in the transcendent, although engaged in all sorts of activities. Who, who, who wants to tackle this one? Requires some intelligence. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. I think it's in reference to be um, staying detached of our karmas and offering results of our karmas to Krishna. Uh, no question of karma, but continue. You're, you're, you're getting close. What is inaction? Uh, Krishna Guru Maharaj, is it something to do with the material world and being in the world but not of the world? Close. Well, what, what is performing action and what is performing inaction? Action is material actions. 
and inaction is not thinking about that actions that will, will get you more karma. So is it actions that lead to karma and, and good or bad and staying independent of that in the material world? You're dealing with, you have to take it to the transcendental. Maybe Action. It's devotional service. Devotional service. What is it? Action or inaction? It's uh, devotional action. service is action. Action, action. in in action. <laughs> Is it uh, something Maharaj with kar sukarma and akarma? No. no. No, this is from Bhagavad Gita when Krishna explains to Arjuna mm. uh, about the inaction and action. So, uh, the emotional service is action, right? Krishna's service is inaction because it produces no reaction. Is it that that uh, uh, whatever we do, we should think of it as not bad or not good? We should just carry on irrespective of uh, uh, piety or impiety of the work. Just thinking of like, for example, Arjuna killed many uh, people in the battlefield. It was a bad action, but because it was performed for Krishna, it turned to be a, a, a Krishna consciousness service activity. So we should do yeah, whatever... So there's no karma attached to that. Yeah. So inaction and action is that the soul does nothing but appears to act. And at the same time, activity is performed, but because there's no reaction, it's called inaction. So one who performs devotional service is not getting any act, any results from their activity. Therefore, though they act, it's inaction. And those who those who uh, perform activities in the material world, um, they are acting. Uh, let's see. One, so inaction is devotional service although one is performing activities. So in other words, although the soul is, or though you're doing activities, there's no activity because there's no material activity. So material activity is not being performed. That's for, therefore it's called inaction, although there, therefore it appears to be action. And the soul appears to be action, acting, but it's not inacting. It's, the, it's these minds, the senses, and the intelligence that are doing everything. Just like you're talking, but you're not doing anything because it's your it's your intelligence and mind who is acting, but the soul is not moving. The soul is in, fixed in its one situation, in one one position. And so, one who is performing activities in the spiritual sense is in a transcendental position. They they don't they don't get any results for their activities because the soul never touches the material energy. And therefore, there's no, there's no uh, what we say, karmic reactions. Is that help? Yes, Maharaj, it does. Thank you. Yeah. It seems a little unclear yet, but still, if you read that section in the Bhagavad Gita, you'll understand that you as a soul are not doing anything, although you're performing action. And because you're performing action, you're actually not doing anything because there's no material reaction. So inaction means no material reaction, although there, there is some activity being performed. Therefore, it's called inaction. One who sees inaction, inaction, and action, and inaction, 
is intelligent. Okay, so let's do where are we here? Okay, next one. Someone read. Thus, I have explained to you knowledge still more confidential. Deliberate on this fully and then do what you wish to do. Uh, Gita um, 18.63. Uh, so Krishna explains and he gives the knowledge. Now he's giving in the 18th chapter more confidential knowledge. And then he tells Arjuna, now I've explained everything. Think about it, deliberate it on it. And then you have, you can see the person with so many options like that. So, so transcendental knowledge given by the higher authority should be thoughtful. And then you have a choice on how you should act. But after hearing transcendental knowledge from the authority, it becomes clear which way you should act although it may not seem to be clear, as it appears here. Okay. So these are a little, this is a little exercise. We'll kind of skip this. Choose one verse. You can do this in your own little groups. Passage, which you find difficult to understand. Examine, explain what you don't understand. Identify and write down questions which you've answered would help you to better understand the subject. That's a little exercise you can follow. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I want to, we're going to give you a discussion question. And we want to hear from many devotees about what this means. And we'll ask someone to read. Okay. Here we go. Who would like to read? Hare Krishna Maharaj, I can read. Say some discussion. Okay. The Karpanas or misery per, miser, miserly it's called, person. It's Kripanas. 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 Kripa means mercy. Kripanas. The Kripanas. Yes. Waste their time in being overly affectionate for family, society, country, etc. in the material conception of life. One of the often, often attached to family life, namely to wife, children and other members on the basis of skin disease. The Kripanas thinks that he is able to protect his family members from the death or the Kripanas think that his family or society can save him from the verge of death. Such family attachment can be found even in the lower animals who take care of children also. Okay, now I'm going to ask you two questions. What does it mean and what, does it, what doesn't it mean? So let's see if we can... A little discussion going. What is it being? What's being said here, and what is not being said here? Um, so what is being said here, Maharaj, is um, it says the my it's called miserly person who's attached. It's called miserly because he's not looking into the wider um, as prospect of the life. What we should be as a human being into Krishna consciousness and become attached to God but he's rather attached to his family life and the worldly affairs um, of this material world. Continue. Um, the Kripanas think that he is able to protect his family from members from death. He is also in a delusion um, that he is capable uh, of doing anything um, because he himself thinks he is the Karta. And he is trying constantly in protecting his family. Um, he doesn't understand that death is beyond his control, but he's constantly in the effort of controlling the death as well. Uh, 
So is it wrong? It's wrong to be affectionate for family members, right? It is wrong to be, yes, Maharaj, in a sense, because he, he should be doing it as his duties, but he should also become Krishna conscious and make family Krishna conscious. Well, what, is, what, what is his problem here? So I think his problem is that he's, um, he's thinking he's a controller and he's not trying to make, um, uh, he's not trying to bring Krishna in his life and be dependent on him. Okay, someone else would like to also offer a discussion based on this? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. I think the word overly affectionate is the problem. Yeah. Okay, so explain more. Because we, we, we have to do our duties, we have to love people, to have interactions and everything, but overly affectionate means that uh, uh, we, we wish to control things and uh, to make it as, yeah, as we please. <laughs> so what does the word skin disease mean, as Prabhupada writes there? Yeah. What does that mean? That uh, the itching. <laughs> What's the source of that itching. Yeah. <laughs> the. You think that uh, these people are my men or my women or my children? Ah, there you go. That's the point. Okay, continue. And so we have a lot of affection saying, this is my child, this is my husband, this is my wife, and with them I'm going to be happy forever. And we get uh, completely entangled in thinking of how to make them happy, so we become happy and so on and so forth, forgetting that the real goal of life is to become Krishna conscious and get beyond the bodily concept of life. And we forget that these people are just a very temporary manifestation of our karma and who knows in the next lifetime or the previous lifetime, who was our wife, who was our child, who was our husband. We don't even know where we were and who we were before. So this is just illusion. And to be carried away by this illusion is foolish ignorance. It's, so, called skin, it's called skin disease. Skin disease. And so uh, the Kripana forgets that, you know, this is all temporary and one day death will come and no one will be there able to help him through that. Nobody can come with him. Nobody can give him anything at that point. And so he just thinks that uh, what is happening? What's happening? But it's too late because by then Yamaduta is saying, come on, time to get out. So life is he, Yeah, so uh, he says he thinks he's able to protect his families. But what's the next line say? Or he thinks that the family or the society can save him from the verge of death. He thinks that all these people are there. He lives, he puts his faith in all these fallible soldiers like my people, my family, my bank balance, and he thinks he can live forever happily just in that, in that illusion. But it's just an illusion and his bubble is going to be burst any moment actually. Is it wrong to have affection for family members? No, it is not wrong because we have affection for the soul. The nature of the soul is to give love and to receive love. So therefore, it is natural to love other people, but to be carried away into thinking that's the all in all or that body or that person is mine and will be there forever with me. That's an illusion that we need to overcome. We need to give affection to help them become more Krishna conscious to help remind them of their eternal position, which is to have their eternal spiritual body full of knowledge, full of bliss, full of joy in a spiritual world. And that yeah. this is a temporary phase in everyone's life. Yeah, you're giving the, the actual ideal or the proper understanding, but what is being said here, and you mentioned it also, is that being overly affectionate causes one to be attached and based on this attachment they think these are my I and mine come in and then through that 
I'm the protector, I'm the savior, I'm the provider. He can't save himself. All these same symptoms are found even in the lower animals who take care of their own children. So basically it's a, a absorption in the bodily conception of life centered around family. <laughs> And therefore, why is he called creepina or miserly? Why, why is that word used? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. <clears throat> so I think creepina is used because uh, uh, this, the, he's not using uh, his human form um, rightly. He's not using his capabilities uh, in the right way. Uh, instead, he's engaged in illusion and in the skin disease. Correct. That's right. Kripana means he's just centering. It's, it's like selfishness. It means limited. It means miserly. It means I'm not understanding anything beyond the immediate uh, family connections and so on. What's the opposite of Kripana? Would it be Kripalu, one who's very merciful? Um, well, a person who is miserly is someone who is selfish or stingy or is self-absorbed. What would be the opposite of that? A generous and merciful and kind and giving. Yeah, and broad-minded also. Broad-minded. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So miserly, and then we have broad mindedness or, uh, yeah, compassionate, like that. Okay. A little discussion question. Next one. Someone read? Mm -hmm. It is not blindly accepted this Krishna consciousness with considerable deliberation. We take the decision. Lecture BG 7, 1, 2, 3, December 14, 1972. So Prabhupada said, you know, ask your questions, get your doubts clarified, understand everything, and then make your decision. Even if it's accepted blindly, that's, fa that's fine, but it doesn't really awaken the intelligence. And then if you put in a situation where you become, what we say, attacked by Maya, uh, you may not be able to understand how to use this knowledge in such a way as that you can free yourself from Maya's attack or the effects of Maya's attack. So Prabhupada said, with considerable deliberation, take a decision. Take that decision. In other words, Prabhupada wants us to be thoughtful in accepting whatever, whatever is being presented in Krishna consciousness and not simply blind acceptance. Okay, next one. Okay, so someone want to read? Mm -hmm. Understanding can also be in relationship to other aspects of study and application. Men of a small intelligence worship the demigods and their fruits are limited and temporary. Those who worship the demigods go to the planets of the demigods, but my devotees ultimately reach me. Reach my supreme... Uh, let me bring, uh, my supreme... <laughs> Yeah. Um, that's from 7.23. Yeah, so that's Bhagavad Gita, I like that. So understanding also about what it means to worship the demigods and why we shouldn't worship the demigods. The preaching understanding for those who are attached to demigod worship, which is very prominent. 
uh, for at least within the continent of India, and the personal understanding of why one should not worship the demigods. Like that. So this particular slide is just teaching us that we should also have an understanding of what not to do <laughs> in relationship to this topic of demigod worship. Okay. Okay, who can tell me who this is? Now you ready? And where it is? Who knows? Krishna Balaram Maharaj from um, Rindavan. It's Krishna Balaram, yes. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, Radha Bhakti Maharaj is saying it's from Alachua. It says it on the bottom there, doesn't it? Right yes, here. Yes. Let's see if we can see it. No, those are not in Alachua, Guru Maharaj. That Balaram looks different. I think this is Jaipur, maybe. Let me go back here. Mm -hmm. I don't actually know. <laughs> so I'm asking you, I don't know where it is either. <laughs> How about uh, maybe New Mayapur, France? Anybody been to New Mayapur in France? In the picture, but um, uh, it's um, there's France Krishna is very bended. Krishna, yes, maybe Ujjain. Rabbi Mataji is saying Ujjain. Ujjain? Might be Ujjain, Maharaj. I'm not sure. Radha Bhakti Mataji is saying Ujjain. Okay. Something to think about. Okay, next one. Next slide. Let me uh, let me do one thing here for a minute. This will make this a little bit easier for everybody. So now we're talking about those different principles that we described earlier. Someone read. Personal application. What does this have to do with you to apply Krishna conscious the theology with reference to your external practices and internal development so as to develop appro appropriate Vaishnava qualities and behavior? Okay, so applying this knowledge, what does it have to do with you? This is the application of the knowledge, your internal development and your actual services. And what is the results? Proper Vaishnav qualities, which are the internal development and the behavior, the external development, okay? Next one. Someone read. Are you able to first explain how Shastra applies to your life? For example, explain based on Shastra how following the four regulative principles is beneficial for you. Second, change your opinion and behavior on the basis of Shastra and give up misconceptions you may have about certain Shastric principles and passages. Realize that there may be more than one way to apply a verse. Third. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. 
Go ahead, and then number three. Identify and express doubt, then seek a relevant guidance. Okay, so this is in the category of uh, personal application. So we talked about the internal and the external. The external is how to apply your life based on the four regulative principles. The internal is to have a, uh, change your opinion, which ultimately will change your behavior, giving up misconceptions, realize that the verse, different, different verses can be understood in different ways. Okay. Okay, here's the next one. Simply quoting verses like a pirate will not be very much beneficial. One must apply Gyanam Vigyana Sahitam. So we must know the Vigyana, how practically that uh, is taught by the Goswamis. As a person puts on new garments, giving up old ones, they're so similar except the new material bodies, giving up the old and useless ones. So what is being uh, what is being illustrated and explained here? So we not we should not uh, um, just quote verses like a pirate. Um, we um, have to understand them and and yeah apply practically. So what it, Gyanam means understanding, Vigyanam means realization through application. Okay? Gyanam, Vigyanam, Samitam. This is taught by the Goswamis. Reading, understanding, applying. Okay, I think we can find, easily understand where this is, or who it is, and where it is. Radha Sham Sundar Sri Vrindavan Dham. Jai Ho, Radha Sham Sundar Ki Jai. So here you see two photos of preaching applications. Okay, so you see Prabhupada talking to a group of religionists and scholars. And then you see Prabhupada up on Hippie Hill back in 1967 with all the hippies when Prabhupada was doing kirtan amidst this hippie. So we can see both of them apply the principles of preaching and both are, uh, uh, it help, helps you to understand that how to preach in different situations. So one he's discussing, the other one he's doing kirtan. Okay, next. I wish to encourage all my disciples to very carefully learn this philosophy of Krishna consciousness because there are so many preachers who will be required to bring this message to all corners of the earth. Letter, Los Angeles, 7th February, 1969. Okay, so yeah, Prabhupada's urging the importance of preaching. We have a mission to spread this to everywhere. He wants to inspire everyone he wants each and every one of us to learn the philosophy and be able to speak it. Okay, and where is that photo? 
Tompkins Square Park, New York. Right. That was the beginning. What year was that? 1966. Yes, correct. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see here. I'm having a little trouble with this, moving these slides. Okay. Okay. Where is this? Who are they? Alachua, Krishna Balaram, Florida. Hey, that's Alachua, right? You got it. Okay, Krishna Balaram in Alachua. Okay, next slide is someone read. Faith and conviction to build and maintain your faith and conviction in the process of Krishna consciousness. The Shastrik, I'm sorry, I can't see Maharaj. Yeah, the Shastrik understanding in, in your life. In, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Faith and conviction. Build your faith, understand through Shastra. Okay, that's okay. So we have Prabhupada in a very expressive pose. So faith, there's two different aspects of faith. Someone read. How is faith created by association with devotees? Faith. Oops, wait a minute. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Faith is the complete conviction that simply by serving the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, one can achieve all perfection. After reading Bhagavad Gita, one should give up all other engagements and adopt the service of the Supreme Lord Krishna. If one is convinced of this philosophy of life, that is faith. Okay. Um, can you explain that in your own words? Um, so, uh, faith is actually um, the complete perfection would be uh, worshipping Lord Sri Krishna with complete faith. How does that develop? By, if, uh, by service, by service of Supreme Lord Krishna. Correct, uh, yeah. So that faith, that faith develops by, by serving the Supreme Lord. And what's the results? It's the complete faith. Okay. And then explain the rest of it. <laughs> so after reading Bhagavad Gita, one should follow or apply Bhagavad Gita uh, by giving up all the engagements and offering pure devotional service to Krishna. And once he is f convinced with the philosophy by applying it, um, uh, the faith develops. Right. And uh, it means that if you're actually reading Bhagavad Gita, you'll adopt the service of the Supreme Lord and give up all other engagements not related to that service. Okay. And if you're convinced, that is called faith. Okay, here we go. Let's see here. I don't know if this thing works and doesn't. Okay. Next one. Queen Kunti prayed, I wish that all those calamities would happen again and again so that we could see you again and again for seeing you means that we will no longer see repeated births and deaths. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.8.25. Yeah. This is Queen Kunti's statement. So what does she mean when by seeing you, we will no longer see repeated births and deaths? Uh, Guru Maharaj, um, here uh, Queen Kunti 
is uh, mentioning about like um, when we surrender fully to Lord Krishna. Um, so at the time of uh, and uh, seeing seeing Lord is very difficult thing. Uh, so if we see Lord, if we can see Lord, then that will be um, our last life and uh, with devotion. So we can go back to Godhead. That's what. Should I mean. we pray, should we also pray like this? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Oh, you think so, huh? Okay. So you, you're praying you want calamities in your life, huh? <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj, but, um, but uh, not really, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> we have to do that, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not practical. She's, she, she's understanding from her position. Her position is that she's surrounded by many, many, many wonderful uh, material arrangements. She has a good family. She's respectable. She's worshipable. She has the association of the Supreme Lord. But because everything is so nice, she feels that she really, her devotion is, is lacking. So she's asking, Please take these niceties away. Give me some trouble. And then I can really call out to you with devotion. I can really go deeper in my, to my relationship with you. So this is a prayer not everyone can make. But if one can make this prayer, then uh, one has to be ready for what Krishna will provide. You might take away your family, take away your money, take away your health, take away everything, and all you're left is with Krishna. <laughs> so um, we don't say that everyone should adopt this, but this is the highest principle of surrender. Yes, good message. Yes. Yeah, it's clear. Anyone else would like to comment on this statement by Queen Kunti? Okay, so Guru Maharaj. There to make this prayer, Guru Maharaj, uh, life is difficult enough as it is. Okay, you don't need extra ones. You can, there you go. That's a nice understanding. I'm getting enough difficulties, therefore, I don't need to make another prayer like that. <laughs> Okay, Tushar, what were you going to say? I just think from my personal perspective, you know, how, how do we create that hunger for Krishna? Because she's, we're so pampered. She's, she's, she's showing you how to do it here. That um, everything is nice, and therefore every, because everything is nice, there's that eagerness to attain the shelter of your lotus feet and devotion is not there. So give me some calamities, let, the, let them happen. Then I can understand there's nothing left but just you. It's like they say there's no atheists in the foxholes. <laughs> so yeah, hmm. her people turn to God more when things go wrong. Very nice. Thank you. Okay. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shila Prabhupada and all glories to you. A small. Um, yes, Maharaj. Shrinivas. A small question, Maharaj. When Kunti Maharaj is saying here, like, uh, you know, you mean, uh, for seeing you means that we no longer see repeated births and deaths. When she says that statement, while seeing Krishna at that moment, why is she still thinking about repeated births and deaths and not like, you know, she will be reaching the destination in that life only, Maharaj? What with the... Saying you will, will eradicate any births and deaths. Okay. She's seeing Krishna. She's Krishna's auntie. She's yes. seeing him. But now she's talking about really seeing him. <laughs> seeing him with loving devotion. Okay. So she's, she's thinking that she's not yet there and uh, 
she wants right. to see him again and again because she's expecting still the repeated birth and that because she is not yet there is that what the intention yeah is? that's that's nice point she she hasn't reached her own understanding of what it means to see krishna thank you Thank yeah, that's nice. Thank you. Yeah, that was that was a, one of the main points. Okay. Here's a little bit about faith. Whatever the case, we must have faith in the word of Krishna. When we purchase a ticket on Pan American or Air India, we have faith that the company will take us to our destination. Faith is created because the company is authorized. Uh, authorized. Our faith should be should not be blind. Therefore, we should accept that which is recognized. Okay, you want to explain that? <laughs> Unless there is a coronavirus, we will get to the destination. <laughs> but if we have a faith in Krishna, then Nevertheless, uh, whatever uh, uh, we do, if we have uh, faith in Krishna, then we will reach his de destination, the Kolokadam. The key is that we should accept that faith which is recognized. And, and we should understand it properly, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That, that recognized faith is what? <laughs> so we can't do our own conclusions or some other speculations. Yeah. Okay, faith should be based on knowledge. And knowledge of what? Just like the example that is given beforehand, we have faith that this airline will take us because the company is authorized. So in the same way, mm -hmm. how does that apply to the last part? Mm -hmm. Because Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and he is recognized as such as the Bhagavad Gita explains, then we can have faith that simply by serving the Lord, um, and we'll reach our destination. We'll develop our love for Krishna. But we can recognize only if we accept first. We can only, yeah. We can only accept when we understand. If you don't have faith in Krishna, then you can't surrender fully. So you have to mm -hmm. develop that faith in Krishna by hearing about Krishna and by serving those who who, who already surrendered to Krishna. Well, another person could say, well, you know, I've been on Air India and I know the company can take me to India. So therefore, it's good if you buy the ticket. The spiritual master says, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and it's uh, you." It is your duty to serve him in devotion. And if you accept that words based on faith, then that is called recognized faith. A faith in something that is uh, tangible. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Someone want to read? Mm -hmm. Authority. To promote the op appropriate attitude towards authority, avoiding both challenging attitude and blind acceptance, avoiding fanati fanaticism 
and uh, speculation compromise while maintaining, uh, maintaining thoughtful acceptance of authority to help develop Krishna consciousness. Okay. So, read, continue. Uh, one should therefore avoid observing a pure devotee externally, but should try to see the internal features and understand how he is engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. In this way, one can avoid seeing the pure devotee uh, form a materi material point of view. Factor of devotion, text uh, six, or four. Yeah. So these these are statements that uh, uh, the transcendental person is not identified by his external appearance. Avoiding seeing the material, the pure devotee, um, people are attracted by the external, the way he speaks, the way he dresses, the way he interacts. So, but actually, we should understand the transcendental person from trying to see the internal features. And that is basically his vakya, his words. And then see how he's engaged in devotional service. So observing the pure devotee, and not from the external point of view, but from those qualities that are connected to the qualities of a pure devotee. Mostly it's his, it's his words as opposed to our vision of his appearance. Okay. Someone read? Mm -hmm. Just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self-realized souls can impart knowledge unto you because they have seen the truth. Okay, so it here it teaches how to approach a spiritual master. And three, three points are mentioned. So what is the three points? We can see those three uh, points. In. So, uh, inquire uh, submissively, render service, and uh, uh, the self-realized souls can impart knowledge to you because they okay. <laughs> so the in three words, give me three different. Uh, and three different things that are being illustrated here. Inquire, service, and and knowledge, maybe. The inquiry is right. Sir, rendering service is right, and the other one is submissively. Ah, oh, submissive. Okay. Pradipatena, Pariprasyena, and Sevaya. So Pariprasyena means submissive, Pariprasyena means inquiry, and Sevaya means to serve. Okay. When you approach okay. in that way, then you open the door to hear transcendental knowledge. Okay, very good. Very important verse. Okay, so where are we where are we here now? Krishna Balaram Vrindavan. Krishna Balaram and Vrindavan. Sorry, in Vrindavan. Sorry, Gornita and Vrindavan. Gornita, yeah, Gornita and Vrindavan. Correct. Okay, so this next section gets into some really philosophical 
understanding. So we'll save that for tomorrow. So we'll go into the different applications, preaching application, theoretical application, um, mission application, like that. Okay. So we'll stop here. And uh, so you can see the progression of how knowledge expands itself out into different activities and how these activities are meant to be performed, how to develop internal characteristics, qualities, and uh, then we'll get into that in a very dynamic way and then the following from verse 68 to verse 95 is really a summation of everything we have so far uh, uh, been exposed to. Okay, so we'll stop here and uh, see if there's any questions or comments final about uh, what we're seeing. We have five questions on the chat, yeah? Okay. Well, these are not questions, these are some of the statements. Okay, any other final statements or questions? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances all the to Srila Prabhupada, all the to him. Um, Guru Maharaj, um, inspired um, by your lectures and uh, by your instructions, uh, myself and uh, Sri Devi Mataji, uh, we both are thinking of starting a reading call uh, with our God brothers, our God sisters. Um, so we need your blessings, Guru Maharaj. Yes, please. You have my full permission, best wishes, and whatever uh, you need to become successful. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, we are going this to post in the group, uh, WhatsApp group today so that uh, devotees uh, can see that and uh, respond. So we are thinking we'll start next week after long weekend um, here in US. So. Okay. So the idea is to have a, a discussion group, uh, a Shastra discussion yes, group. Yes, Guru Maharaj, yeah. We didn't yet still decide on the um, book like either Srimad Bhagavatam or Chaitanya Chaitamrita. Uh, Any one we are going to pick up, uh, pick that Guru Maharaj. And uh, uh, reading call for one hour we are thinking, um, Guru Maharaj. Good, good, good. Yeah, whatever you decide, I'm sure will be interesting for everyone. So everyone else, uh, uh, please consider becoming a part of this. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank wonderful, you. wonderful. Okay, so we'll say, we'll leave everybody now. Thank you very much. Keep healthy and uh, keep reading Freel Prabhupada's books.